welcome to Mainly Outdoors. My name is Jesse, and today we are out in my truck cab camper again. I will show you that a bit later. Today, in particular, we are going to be making some sushi in back of the truck cab camper, so that's going to be pretty cool. It's 10 o'clock right now, so what I think I'm going to do first is there's a brook trout stream not far from here. It has a bunch of native fish in it, so these are native wild brook trout. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait her up. I'm going to go check out this stream. And for starters, we're going to see if we can't catch a couple fish. So of course, we're going to get our waders on here. So before we even get out there, I figured I'd talk about the flies that I'm gonna be using. So when I'm looking at a new stream, I don't like to spend a lot of time switching flies. Right now it's late April, approaching into May. So what I'm gonna be starting with is this olive hair's ear. One of my favorites for a mayfly imitation. And below that, we are gonna put on just a black zebra midge, awesome fly really hard to beat in these small streams especially for brook trout so these are all flies that i tie if you guys want some you can contact me on my instagram i'll throw that up here or on my email i'd be happy to tie some for you I haven't caught anything just yet but right here this is just a textbook trout spot if there's not a fish in there then i don't know what i'm doing on this river it's got a lot of debris built up in it, all kinds of cover, and when the leaves come in, these alders are gonna provide shade as well as protection. So just a great spot right here. But I'm not gonna fish it from this side. What we're gonna do is work our way around to the other side without spooking the pole too much. It just seems like a lot better area to, to fish this run. Now, if you guys do wanna go brook trout fishing on your own in Maine, Here's a little taste of what you can expect. You are gonna be doing some bushwhacking because the best streams are really grown in. Um, but if you're doing this, it's usually a good sign. Got him. Hello, little Brookie. Nice. What do you take? Took the mayfly. I've been seeing a couple come off the water. Oh, shoot. <laughs> oh, I lost my net. I didn't even realize it. All right, so we'll have to land him without a net. Nice, look at that. Oh, we actually took the, uh, the midge. Just took that little zebra midge. Oh. And there he goes. Well, that was pretty awesome. That was a native Maine brook trout, always fun to catch. I just caught that on a zebra midge. I tie most of my small brook trout stream uh, flies on Euro jigs, just because there are so many snags down there. When you're catching brook trout, you should be fishing near snags like this and that creates current behind it, which makes a deep pool, as well as in front of it, we kind of get this uh, nice run right through here. So just textbook brook trout waters. I'm gonna move on, we're gonna go upriver, see if we can't find a couple more native brook trout here, so. Coming up on another good looking spot up ahead, you can see that sharp bend. So what tends to happen in these really sharp bends is the outer corner 
is actually gonna be a lot deeper. I think this one has some good potential. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cross over the river. Oh yeah, this is perfect. So we have two nice riffles here. I'll start with the one at my feet and we'll push out to what I'm considering the better one out towards that deeper water. Gotcha. <laughs> Look at him. He's so little. Oh. You can't exactly be trophy hunting when you're uh, going for native brook trout. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is actually a, yeah, this is a little salmon par. I'm pretty sure. Yep. This is an Atlantic salmon par. I can't take them out of the water legally here. So hopefully you can see them. Barbless hook. He's free to go. That's so cool. So this does go to the Atlantic Ocean and there are a couple uh, Atlantic salmon that run up this. And as a result, we do have some par and smolt in these waters. Of course, they are a endangered and protected species here in Maine. So if you do end up on a coastal water where there are Atlantic salmon that run up it, just keep that in mind. You cannot tell the difference between an Atlantic salmon and a landlocked salmon. So the only difference that there really is, is that the body of water you're fishing connects to the ocean and the, the salmon are able to run up it. There's usually signs that'll tell you uh, when that's the case. But if you see anything that looks like a salmon to you, don't take it out of the water definitely don't take it home and just release it as safely as possible. Anyway, that's enough about that. Let's see if we can't pull a couple more brook trout out of this run behind me. It's a really nice section. We have a channel here and a channel back there and they kind of combined into this deeper pool right here. And I've got a couple fish sitting right through here and I'm just kind of working my way down this run. So this whole section has potential to have fish and then it shallows up here and I'll probably move on. Oh, got one. And he's gone. That looked like a, uh, a small brook trout. I <laughs> have an overpowered rod for a fish like that. Hard to keep good tension on him without just flinging him out of the water. Gotcha. This is a nice little run. I've actually been doing well here. Can't tell what this is. I would think it'd be a brook trout. Yep, it's a little brookie. And my midge is just killing it today. o'clock now so it's probably about time to turn around head back down river caught some native brook trout even a native atlantic salmon par that was really cool now we're gonna hoof it out of here head back to the truck cap camper and make some sushi tonight so let's go do that and i will see you guys at the pickup all right well made it back to what is going to be the campsite for tonight kind of peaceful in its own way. I mean, it's just essentially like a dirt pit, but <laughs> let's get right to the main event here. We are going to be making sushi in this truck cab camper. So we're going to keep this pretty simple. I got a cucumber, avocado, our nori, and some pre-made sushi rice. Is our nice chunk of fish. So 
So this is actually some halibut that I got with Jacob Knowles a while back. I don't know if I still have some footage, but I'll show you how we got it if we did really quick. But we got just a massive halibut and got huge chunks of meat. And uh, anyway, I'm going to cut up that piece and we're going to roll it into some sushi rolls here. So this is what I use to roll sushi with. I don't have a bamboo mat. You really, <laughs> I can't find any of them to buy in Maine. So I got to get one online and I always keep forgetting, but. So the idea with the water is it prevents the rice from actually sticking to your hands. So now I can see I can work with it and it doesn't get stuck to my hands. So we're gonna take some of our fish and we're just gonna lay that right across, like so. Take some of your cucumber or whatever ingredients. You can really put anything in. Uh, this is just what I had on hand when I was leaving, so that's what I've got. Some cucumber, and then we'll add our avocado. I guess the hardest part is just flipping it over at first and roll it forward. This is a very <laughs> thick one. Normally, you probably have it a bit thinner than I'm making, but I am pretty hungry. And then you can actually, so this is here, so you can use it kind of like a bamboo sheet. Just roll it over the top, get everything nice and even. This is a big, big roll, solid roll. Uh, along with my sushi roll, I'm gonna make some sashimi. You're gonna grab a nice palm full of sushi rice and basically just roll it right in your palm is what I do until you have it like that. And after that, you lay your halibut over it, like so, just like that. So there you go, guys. That is how to make sushi out of the back of your truck cap camper. If you prepare that rice ahead of time, which is really easy to do, then it doesn't leave you with much to do. You just got to cut a couple things up, which you could do at home. Uh, put it on the nori with some rice and just roll it up. Definitely a camping meal that I'll probably do a little more often, but just look how good this turned out. It's, it's really that simple. It's not hard to make. You can prepare a lot of stuff from home. I'm just looking for my soy sauce. This probably won't be the last time I do this in the truck cap camper. Some wasabi. That is so good. You'll just have to take my word for it. Try out the sashimi here. Looks pretty good. Man, well, I don't really know what else to say. I think today was a really successful day. Made some awesome sushi, caught a few fish. Okay, anyway, guys, so uh, I am gonna wrap up this meal and I will chat with you guys in the truck cap camper later tonight. So I actually had a small change of plans. I had plenty of sunlight left to make the drive to my next destination. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you wanna see future adventures in my truck cap camper, make sure you go down below, hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure you go hit that like button so I know what videos you guys enjoy. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next adventure. Have a good night.